the community. It's a little bit different. Um, but, you know, it's, it's interesting having uh, this time, right, to spend Ramadan in a very different way, right? Um, this is the first time that we've, uh, I think any of us have ever experienced something like this. Um, and it's interesting, right, that the concept of, of being so isolated in a, in a month where we usually find so much community. Um, and so I was thinking about this, that isolation actually has uh, two, two components to it, right? So from one perspective, um, even before COVID came in, we, it, our society was tended to be a pretty isolated experience, right? There's a lot of disconnectedness within our culture, within our society already. So a lot of folks have been experiencing um, what we call like a loneliness epidemic, right? Even before this experience that we just have, we have a culture where people feel very lonely. Um, and that's just intensified, right? With this court, with the quarantine and everything else that we've been through. Um, but then on the other hand, we have in our tradition, right? A, a spiritual practice of isolation that, you know, when we think about um, our beloved messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who, you know, used to isolate himself, right? And go out into the mountains, into the cave, the cave of Hira to um, seclude himself from the chaos that was the, the city of Mecca around him, right? That it was, it was just everything that he was seeing um, made him pause and want to, want to, want to isolate himself from that to go find something more. And, um, in that isolation, he was able to just sit with himself, look inside his soul, look beyond, and from the quiet, right, he was gifted um, with hearing, right, with hearing the word, and in the darkness, he was given inner sight, um, so that in that isolation, he was personally transformed. And, the, you know, traditionally in Ramadan, we, we emulate this practice, right, through itikaf, through our qiyam, right, through all of these things that we do to really spend time in solitude and connect um, not only with Allah, connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then also going deep within ourselves in order to make that connection very powerful. Um, so it's interesting that these two things are, are juxtaposed, right? So we have this forced isolation, which is different than, you know, a, than our traditional spiritual practice, which is a, which is something we opt for, that we look to um, at certain moments, but we have this forced isolation coupled with this time of, of, of in Ramadan, where we're we're like trying to focus on our on our, on our own development. Um, but that this forced isolation isn't necessarily uh, always a positive experience, right? There's a lot of um, fear that's attached to it and a lot of really sincere loneliness um, that can sometimes feel really overwhelming. Uh, when I was looking into this, I was found some advice from uh, an astronaut, his name is Scott Kelly, who spent a year of, um, in the space station. And I thought that this was a really interesting insight based on what we're currently going through. So he was giving advice to people experiencing quarantine now and co under COVID-19. Um, and I'll go through his advice and adding some things in because I think it was, could be very beneficial. So the first thing that he recommended was to follow a schedule. So for many of us, it's hard to even remember what day it is, right? From one day to the next, um, you know, it's just, it's, everything is kind of a blur. A lot of us are telecommuting, um, you know, kids are home from school. It's, it's really hard to even know what's happening. So his first uh, um, piece of advice was to follow a schedule. And we know that in times um, of chaos, having routine is really helpful. Uh, so as much as possible, you know, having a set time to get up, a set time to go to bed, um, having things strategic throughout the day. And in Ramadan, actually, subhanAllah, this is, this is really help. It's, it becomes a little bit easier to do this because we have to get up for suhoor. We have to eat iftar at a set time every day, right? Um, we have to try to get, you know, in, in as much as we can, our ibadah in at a certain time. So we have a little bit of that structure built in, but then there's the other pieces that we have an opportunity to, to structure in. Um, the next thing that he says is pace yourself, right? 
because he said there can be a tendency to want to do a whole lot because theoretically maybe we have a lot of time right now. And although that's, you know, possibly true, we're also in the middle of a global pandemic, right? And so having, you know, mercy on ourselves and having compassion for our capabilities when we're undergoing this collective traumatic experience, um, it's really important to be aware of that as well. And so, you know, maybe have goals, but also being compassionate when we just, you know, when we just can do the simple things. I saw somewhere someone wrote, and I really liked this, that, you know, having the ability to say, I took a shower in the middle of a global pandemic. I'm amazing, alhamdulillah, right? Like that can be a huge thing, just getting out of bed and doing the normal thing in the midst of, of all of this, uh, this trauma that we're experiencing because it's very real. Um, you know, there's an, in addition to that, you know, taking a breaks from the news, right? Because it can feel really overwhelming. I, I, I work part-time for um, a local city health department and um you know so in, i'm supporting some of the epidemiologists in the group in the group who are working on preventing the the outbreak and they're extremely overwhelmed and 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 they were saying you know it's it's really hard to be working on the epidemic during the day and then coming home and having everybody tell them what's happening in the rest of the world at the same time and i could really relate to that too where it's it can be so much information all like that's that's pushed through so many different directions i know for myself i've had to take myself off many whatsapp groups and you know trying not to go on social media as much just because of the overload can be really overwhelming so making sure we have a way to to um, protect ourselves a little bit from that excessive uh that excessive um uh, information over, uh, channels, right? Um, so the next thing that the that the astronauts recommended was going outside. So even though we're in we're in quarantine, we are allowed to go out and take walks and be in nature. And you know, it's that's is, in Ramadan. This is such a special thing too, because if we can do that, you know, and contemplate the creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, it's an opportunity for us to be, connect to Allah in a different way. Um, uh, so the, the astronaut goes on to say, uh, Mr. Kelly, that we need a hobby. So he said that in, in space, he bought a lot of books with him. And he was saying like, it, it was, you know, amidst all of the technology, it was really important for him to have a physical book that he could read. And I was thinking that was so interesting because, you know, we are bombarded with all with technology so much right now, it can be really exhausting on our um, on our bodies, on our eyes. And I read somewhere too that, you know, there's a re Zoom fatigue is real, right? And that like when we're in Zoom meetings all day long, all the time, it's it's not only uh, um, difficult for our eyes, but it's also difficult because we have to have a certain level of like performance that that's, you know, knowing where other people are looking at us all the time, that's really unnatural compared to like a natural conversation or gathering when, um, we're in front of a camera but for multiple hours it can be very difficult so being my <laughs> yeah. sorry yeah. all right um uh, so the next thing he recommended was keeping a journal um and you know jotting things down about what we're you know what what someone's feeling what they're doing what they're thinking um, because this is an opportunity to be able to really look back. Um, and, you know, in a lot of times in therapy settings too, we do recommend that because just writing things down can be a release for all of that emotion that's building up all of those thoughts um, as, as well. Uh, taking time to connect. So I mentioned the Zoom fatigue, right? But sometimes it can be really helpful. I know um, like in my family, we've instituted um, Zoom iftars. So all of us from different households will eat iftar together, but through Zoom, um, which is, I, and I joke with my dad, most of you know my dad, I've seen him more this year in Ramadan than like ever before, <laughs> because he'd always be at the masjid and we'd never see him. But like, actually I see him every iftar. Um, so that can be a fun way to connect with friends and family who we can't be physically close to, but being able to find ways to connect um, 
in, in other ways or, you know, in other avenues or maybe, you know, old school um, picking up a phone or, you know, or even text or, or whatever if we don't want to add the video component, but finding ways to connect to each other because the isolation can be very overwhelming um, and being able to do that, uh, being able to isolate together can, can be a benefit, inshallah. Um, this, the last couple of things that uh, Mr. Kelly mentioned was listening to experts, right? Um, that although it's sometimes difficult to follow this, the strictness of what's being recommended, it's actually to the benefit of all. And I was listening to a talk by Yasser Qadhi, and he was saying that, um, Pamela, by, by following the orders, right, we're actually helping to save lives. So we're not only protecting ourselves, right, but we're actually, by helping to flatten the curve, we're saving lives of people who wouldn't otherwise been able to get the care that they need. And, you know, when we think about, you know, if you've saved a life, you're saving all of humanity, right, in our tradition, then subhanAllah, like this, by following the orders and, and isolating ourselves, it actually could be looked at, right, as an act of ibadah, as an act of worship. So imagine all of that barakah that's building up as we, you know, isolate ourselves as Ramadan, if we do it kind of with intentionality and not, not necessarily even the we're forced to, but also, you know, make the intention that we're doing this to protect people, to come closer to Allah, to, um, to, and then try to, as much as we can, spend that time um, in, in worship as well, being in Ramadan. Um, so, you know, this, even though it can be really hard, um, we do have an opportunity, right, to shift this Ramadan and to spend the, the forced isolation in remembrance. Um, but I do want to come to come back to the difficulty, right? Because I don't want to sugarcoat it and say, oh, just do all these things and you'll feel better, right? Because it can be really, really overwhelming. Um, being alone um, in this capacity is no joke. And, and none of us, as I mentioned, have probably experienced this at this level before. Um, and so my last piece of recommendation would be just to notice those feelings, right? Um, to sit with it, to name it, right? To be like, wow, I'm really feeling sad. I'm really feeling anxious. This is really hard, right? And being okay to say that to, your, to oneself and sit with it for a little. Um, and then the next step I would recommend is after, you know, giving some time to that, then turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and handing that to him, right? So it could be like, I'm feeling really overwhelmed. I'm feeling really sad. Ya Allah, like, please help me through this and, and giving that in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do this one technique in one of some of our trauma practices called resourcing, where we call on a figure in our lives um, to offer us uh, a quality that we're seeking. So I was thinking about this and I was thinking that by, um, um, I was thinking about that by thinking about one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or his attributes, we're able to really, um, we can really uh, hone in on those qualities and make them alive for us. And um, so, for example, I was thinking about, you know, if feeling very overwhelmed and feeling very weak, right? Um, by thinking of the name, for example, Al-Qawi, you know, the, the powerful. And really bringing to mind like the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the protection that he offers, the, the capacity he has to do anything that he wants within his will. And, you know, his, his promise of, of protection and care and, and mercy for his creation. And really think about it, you know, maybe closing our eyes if necessary and just spending time really bringing that to mind in as much as we can. And then, as I mentioned, and turning ourselves to to him and turning our troubles in the, into his hands. I think, subhanAllah, this is um, something that I've benefited from and I think can be, a, you know, a way to really think about uh, handling, a, a way to handle the isolation and the anxiety, the fear and the sadness that may come with it. Um, at this difficult time while still, you know, turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, because really we, we, we can't get through this without him. All right, I think 
that's kind of it. If anyone has a quick question. Um, do I see any questions? I, th I think we're good. Jazakallah uh, Sister Sakina. Um, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this easy for all of us. Um, and inshallah bless you and your family uh, for being here with us. Um, with that, inshallah, uh, I will ask Kari Enes, I saw him a little earlier, um, to introduce the students that will be doing the tafsir for tonight. Um, inshallah, Kari Enes. Inshallah. I'm ready to go. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق المرسلين المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان واستنى بسنتهم مقتفى أثرهم إلى يوم الدين وبعد Respected brothers and sisters We would like first to thank sister Sakina for the nice presentation uh, We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give sister Sakina and her kids baraka in their life and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them the best of this, of this dunya and to grant them in the hereafter Jannah to al firdaus near Prophet Muhammad alayhi as salatu was salam. Before I introduce uh, the student for today, I would like to encourage all my community. Each one of you, you should attend this uh, online program. We are doing this for the sake of our masjid. We are doing this to tell you we are still there. We have to remember our masjid. We have to stand next to our masjid. Our masjid is calling us. Our masjid needs us. So please, my respected brothers and sisters, all of you, we have more than 1,000 people in this community. We would like to see all of you attending here. We would like to see lots of participants. We would like to see more than this number. So we are doing this uh, because of you. So please, like, you know, you have to encourage us. So we have, like, you know, to keep uh, going in that right direction to do something, inshallah, way better, inshallah, than this. Please, all of you, invite your families, invite your people. Even, like, you know, overseas, you can send them the link to see what we are doing. So we can't pray in the Masjid, but we have something else to do. We can like um, attend this uh, online uh, program. We can listen to nice recitation. We have, mashallah, uh, uh, a variety in this program. Uh, we have uh, tafsir, we have fiqh, we have uh, uh, hadith. We have like you know, a nice reminder every time. So please, like you know, if you can't come to the Masjid, uh, stay at home, just like, you know, it doesn't take more than, like, you know, two seconds. Like, just turn on and log into this link through your computer, through your uh, phone, through your iPad, through your tablet, whatever. But we would like to see more numbers. We would like to see, like, you know, more people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect all of you. And inshallah, I guarantee you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will be pleased with us. Allahumma ameen. So the students for today, they are very fresh. They attended the um, uh, Quran Academy last year, and uh, two of them, mashallah, finished the Qaida, and uh, two of them, inshallah, about to start reciting Quran next week. Today we have like you know, four students from the same family. So we have Noor Al-Badri, and we have Muhammad Al-Badri, and we have Aya Al-Badri, and we have Abrar Al-Badri. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help them and to keep them on the straight path. Allahumma ameen. Are you guys ready, insha'Allah? Um, Please say assalamu alaikum and introduce, your, introduce yourself. Um, assalamu alaikum. My name is Muhammad and then... I'm Aya and I'm abroad. Okay. Okay, we'll start with Muhammad, inshallah. And after Muhammad, the uh, one who comes after, he will introduce himself or she, she introduce herself. Please, Muhammad, start. Bismillah. Um, so first off, chapter first off, chapter five of the Quran continues with Surah An Nisa. Certain rights of women deserve mention at this date. A tree. 
nor should you treat them harshly, that you may take away parts of the dower you have given them, and thus gain a marriage annulment. Except when they have been open loose habits, live with them on a foolish on a footing of kindness, be tolerant towards them. If you take a dislike to them, it may be that you dislike a thing while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to br bring a lot of good through it. The purpose of marriage must be to, to desire chastity, good moral habits, not to satisfy your personal desires. Further, the Quran states that men are the producers and maintainers of women. In return, a woman must be devotedly obedient and guard in her husband's absence. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them to guard her respect and his property and reputation. Muhammad, uh, thank you, Habibi. Jazakallah khairan. Very nice, mashallah. Who, who is the second? Who is second? Assalamu alaikum. Masha Allah. Wa alaikum as-salam. Yeah, please introduce yourself. Okay, my name is Nur Pedri. Assalamu alaikum. So, uh, alaikum as-salam. Uh, started revealing at an early time in Medina when Muslims were confronting on many fronts. Thus, side by side, it discusses other major issues of dealing with the opposition and simultaneously the propagation of Islam. There were also tensions between the new community of Muslims and nearby tribes of Jews. Thus, it also deals with the people of the, of the book who were showing a hostile attitude towards Muslims. They, were, they have been warned of their conduct. Simultaneously, Muslims have been warned of the, hypocrite, of the hypocrites who were trying to weaken newly Muslim society inside have been distinctly identified to facilitate the Muslims to differentiate between the two. Thank you. Thank you, Ya Abra. Ya Noor? Yeah, Who's third? Uh, something very, like, you know, unique about this lady that she always smiles, always, mashallah. <laughs> Say your name, please. Introduce yourself. Wa alaikum salam. Um, my name is Aya. So, Inshallah, Aya, go ahead. Disobedient members of the larger family are now discussed. Views are a cause of indulging in twisting words to make fun of the teaching of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believing in magic and evil. The hypocrites are also warned the only remedy for these people is to make Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the judge and accept his enemies as well against the hypocrites. The lives of Muslims are scared. Therefore, a believer should never kill another believer. If condemn a stranger as a non-believer, if he greets you even in time of war, rather investigate the matter before passing judgment. MashaAllah. Thank you, Aya. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Abrar. Ahlan asalani Abrar alaikum salam. Don't live in places hostile to Islam if you because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's earth is very spacious. Shorten shorten your prayers in times of danger and on journeys. Take steps and maintain the your your safety but if danger threatens you then fight brave bravely don't follow the wrong path seeing that Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance the quran has already been set down and evil that man does is for the harm of his own soul the muslims may work in secrecy and a 
giving charity, B, practicing justice because there is no good in pausing, pausing, thing, and there be humil humiliating a, a criminal, and C, when there is a touching situation, dividing two mm -hmm, callings, um, parties who we intend breaking on the speaking terms. The only sin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive is calling, i.e. joining their the nerds with them, with him. The last portion of Surah Al-Nisa deals with the wrongs of the of the El El Kitab and mentions those people who were honorable exceptions. The outcome of the both of these types of people is discussed. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, like you know, uh, Al Badri family. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to make uh, these gates among righteous and give them the best of this dunya allahumma ameen and uh, give barakah to their parents and make them all the time insha'Allah uh, on the straight path allahumma ameen jazakumullah khairan for listening and uh, we'll go back insha'Allah to sister rahmah to see what else she has jazakumullah <laughs> khair khari anas um, and jazakumullah khair to the badri siblings and family um, Inshallah, um, now we're going to move on to our daily recitation program. So this is the third recitation of the day. Um, so inshallah, please join us after Fajr and before Maghrib. Um, and also for tomorrow, inshallah, we have Mufti Wasim Khan, who will uh, teach us how to work on our hearts during this Ramadan. Um, and we hope to see you tomorrow, inshallah. Please invite a family member or a friend or somebody else to join us and participate, inshallah. And with that, I will turn it back to you, Khari Anas. Uh, Sister Rahma, I believe you, you, you should keep encouraging the community to attend uh, this online program. Tell them, please, my name is Rahma and have Rahma toward your masjid. <laughs> so we sh we should we should tell this community that each one of this community is very important. Each one of you, my brothers, my sisters, you are the community. You are the people of the masjid. You are the owner of the masjid. If you do not attend this program, who else is gonna like you know attend and participate? All of you, my brothers, my sisters, do it as a sadaqa for the sake of Allah. We need, like, you know, we, we need to see more people. We need, like, you know, more numbers. We need more people attending here. Jazakumullah khair. And remember that each one of you is very important to us. Please. So if we have a thousand people, we should start from the beginning. One, two, three, four, five, six. How we get, like, you know, a thousand? We can't get a thousand without starting with one, two, three, four, five, six. So. You, your family, your brother, your mother, your sister, your siblings, your nephew, your niece, all of you guys are very important to us. Please attend and please remember your masjid and your du'as and in your sadaqah. Jazakumullah khairan. I could tell that uh, Sheikh Ahmad Adagamin is ready for a nice recitation. And Sheikh Ahmad Adagamin will start reciting from Surah to an nisa Surah number four. And uh, from the beginning of verse number 102, Sheikh Ahmad at tagamin will attend, insha'Allah, in a few seconds. And he will start the recitation of Surah Al-Nisa, Surah number 4, and from the beginning of verse number 102. Jazakumullahu khair.